I usually love the extended intro for when, um, I guess if he was an acapella, life will guide <laughs> you home. Okay. Welcome once again. This is Late Night Parents. Ways to follow the show is LateNightParents.com. I am Ted Hicks. Across from me is none other than Richie V. Teddy Ted, what is going on? What's good? What's good? What's, What's good? up, my friend? How you doing? Brian Graves is on the one and twos, just holding us down, engineering this show as we usually do. Big shout out to 1240, I mean, excuse me, AM 1240, um, WGVB, the home of Late Night Parents. Big shout out and thank you to all... The affiliates that do play the show, near and far, big shout to our friends XRP Radio in the UK, Tiz Shearer. Thank you once again. Uh, the Underground, um, you name it, Richie V, a lot to discuss. Um, it seems like, as always, as much as we hate talking about this, we always start with a tragedy. It's becoming a, a, an unfortunate habit that we're falling into, but uh, that is what's going on in life these days. Odessa, Texas this time. Yes. Another another man with a gun. A long gun. A long gun on a pullover, stop, turn bad, just start shooting up everybody on the highway. So wait, so Rich, was this something, I mean, and I'm not joking about this or anything like this. Of course not. Was this kind of different because this was like a mobile type shooting where the other the aren't aren't the other ones that we've seen in the past thirty days were like someone on foot mm-hmm. and decided to you know to enter a a premise of some sort yes. and start shooting people yes yeah this is different this is on the, on the, on the highways it's on the highways man this is it's ugly it's ugly no matter what way you look at it. Um, once again, we sound like we, as always, we're railing against our do nothing senators. Not all of them. No. Just some of them. But I'm still stuck on the fact that less than a month ago, uh, El Paso and Dayton happened yep. and they went on their recess. Well, yeah, we're not, they're not going to stop their recess for anything. So. Unless it says they don't get paid. Right. So they go on their recess, and while they're on their recess, we now have Midlands and Odessa, Texas. And what was extremely scary, Rich, was the fact that at one point, um, news agencies were reporting that there were two active shooters happening. See, I, didn't, I missed the early reporting on Oh, it so was, it was like, what? That. So we were sitting here thinking, okay. You know, and, and the first thing I usually say is, you know, XYZ person has been activated. Right. Because right. this is domestic terrorism. But I mean this one is I mean it's still domestic terrorism. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm gonna misinterpret or misstate things here. This one is just a little different because I wonder where the person was heading. Were they heading to do something? Uh, because they guess this was a, a traffic stop. This is a traffic stop. That's all it was. that's how it started. It started as a traffic stop, troopers chasing a Honda Pull him over, driver grabs a rifle, and just starts shooting everybody. Not just at the police, at passengers, at, at everyone in the area. I want to pause this conversation for a second, Rich, and just ask you a question. You may not want to answer this. Go ahead. What goes through your mind, like, when you are dealing with, like, a specific detail? Or, mm-hmm. like, if there's, like, a specific traffic stop or something like that? Like, from your point of view... Right being in your role when you're not podcasting or <laughs> riding your bike, be, be, becoming or, part of car clubs, uh, um, okay. being the uh, IT guru, number one husband, um, uh, award-winning father. When I'm in uniform. You know, I mean, it's like the accolades will never end. Uh, Brian, I'm just, Brian, I'm, I'm just turn, blessed to know this down, guy. <laughs> I'm just really blessed to know this guy. You know, I mean, he's just, I just feel the blessings come down for the last 15 years. I'm like, thank you. Just just to be able to touch your garments. All right. All right. Okay. (laughs) But in all seriousness, 
what what like what goes through your mind like what do you think that that this so in in my role uh-huh. it's rare for us to do a traffic stop okay all right but we it happens right and it's just you have to always be on guard okay um this could happen to any officer anywhere i mean you know, let's face it i mean and it's not it's not just a gun issue. It's not just because it was in Texas. Uh, it could happen anywhere where if you have a, we'll call it a psychopathic person that is intent on committing an evil act, you walk up to that vehicle, you, you got to be on your toes. You got to be on your P's and Q's. You got to be looking in there before you get there. Mm-hmm. It's, you, you, you can't take anything for granted. Okay. That's, that's really the bottom line on it. It's every stop can end like this. And start just as innocently, and and this is, unfortunately, it's not it's it's uncommon for it to turn into what this turned into. Right. Not just the police officers getting shot, but a ton of twenty something civilians now, yes. seven dead, including yes. including the shooter. Um, but it, it happens often enough mm. where officer walks up to a vehicle, and the person just all of a sudden starts shooting. You know, you have organizations of people who just don't like law enforcement that'll do it. Okay. Of course, you have people when they're running from something else that'll do it. Uh, and it it happens. So, you, you know, go to YouTube, just search it, and you'll it, you'll just fall down a rabbit hole of, of the same type of act. Because, you know, in the, in the, I would say in the last five years, with the, you know, mobile phone culture, mm-hmm. we've seen cops... On the other end, yes, totally. you know, kind of like slightly at times out of pocket, out of hand, totally out of pocket. <clears throat> but I mean, I, I, you know, you can only imagine the the video once they release it mm-hmm. of the stop, and like if, how, if there's video of the if stop, there's video not of every the officer stop. was a camera, you know, and every, where the car's it just point. goes zero to a thousand. Like that, and, and, just and like it that. happens that fast. I mean, you know, right. in training, things like that, we do see videos, and we we'll right. see some that maybe don't get out to the public. Okay, and it is it is that quick. Officer can walk up to a vehicle, peek around, mm-hmm. and there's there's a bullet heading towards the face. <sighs> don't even see it. Don't even have no clue that it's going to happen because again, it starts off like just a normal traffic stop. You might be pulling someone over because their tail light is out. Not even right. not even speeding. Not even that they committed. An active violation. I heard one of the people that was shot was a seventeen-month-old. Yeah, toddler. Yeah, toddler. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I. I don't believe. I, I hope the toddler didn't didn't pass. Right. Uh, I believe because I heard there's, there's you know GoFundMe's being created things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So I believe the child survived. Uh, but yeah, it's it's that craziness. It's yeah, that. it's it's so. There's another. I mean, how close are we in danger to just being numb to this and just saying, "Oh, there's another mass shooting"? That's a good question. I think it it varies based on location. Okay. I think some some areas of the country are are still more sensitive to firearms to guns than others. Okay. Um, but as far as yeah, just in general, shootings, mass mass killings. Uh, and like anything else, you hear it over and over again. Sure, you you do become less sensitized to it, right? And take it less for the the shock factor that it really is. Mm. So we're going to see. I mean, um, you know, these words uh, appear hollow because we say them to, so much that we are, we're supporting the you know the loved ones that mm-hmm. are out there. Of course, we are. They're affected. And we hope that our elected officials, when they return from recess, um, I hope this is like on their hot list. You know, like how everyone has like a hot list right. or he's your, your your punch list that this is right up there. Like, OK, mm-hmm. before we sit here and not do anything and just stall, mm-hmm. we have to address this because it's out of control. Now, what I haven't heard at all, and I'm, I'm sure it's going to come out if it hasn't already, uh, the legality of the weapons that were used. Right. I, again, don't know. I'm perusing a little bit now, and I 
can't find any information because that is, my, my next response to that would be, what you know, what do you do? Again, if this is another uh, – so this is either going to go one or two ways, right? Mm-hmm. It's either going to be the firearms were illegally obtained. Okay. In which case, there's really nothing you could do because it's illegally done. Right. And laws would get broken. That's why they're called criminals. Right. Or they were legally obtained, legally obtained at a certain point, and then you play the mental health fat card. And then we start going down the what did this person it. do before? What what's happened? Was this, you know, were there any any you know, any indicators of this happening? To, before, you know, what's the person's you background? Watch, blah blah blah. You watch the Sunday shows, and they're already telling that that that's the line. Right. Well, there's a mental health issue, and the, and we're not saying you know the Americans are not saying that there isn't a mental health issue. Right. Right. But. That can't be your fallback line. Tighten this up. You got to do something. How do you tighten it up? Uh, readdressing the laws, you know, and making you, some you, of the you the, say the change the Second Amendment. No. Making making some of the people that are well, background checks. It's a rifle. Well, well, there is a background check for any legally purchased fire, especially right. uh, pistols. Right. R- rifles, long arms, it's a little less lenient. You still have to do a background check. You, right. know, you still have to have it quick. But, uh, yeah, and sure, why not? I, again, we've had that conversation. I'm all okay with background checks. You know, unfortunately. And registration. Everything is a background check. Is, I mean, unfortunately, it's looking, tying some of this. I mean, this is some work that falls into our realm. Tying some of these databases together to allow them to talk to each right. other. Right, right. I think is number one step, and that's behind the scenes without anything being done. Mm-hmm. Once they're talking to say, okay, if you know, like like you said, if a person is unstable, right, then, then they preclude them from certain right. Even though then you're saying certain civil liberties at a certain, and that's Correct. what that boils down Correct. to. But Correct. sure, you know. But once again, we we we're constantly talking about someone walking in to their favorite store. We won't just blame Walmart or Dick's oh, or, no. or Cabela's not, no. and say, I need the body armor. I need 20,000 rounds and I need two AR-15s. And they're like, okay. And you hand them the credit card and a driver's license. <laughs> and 12 minutes and 30 seconds later, they're walking back to their car. I think that would put up a flag. <laughs> You think, right? I think that would set up a flag. You think, but it, you know that's not the case. Um, we're going to see how this um, unfolds. Un- unfortunately, this is another marker in history where this is no different than when people say Parkland. When you say Parkland, you have a different right. Par- definition kids. of you know more than just that 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 geographical location. Right. right. Now Parkland hit. Home even worse because it was kids. Because it was kids, as it should. It's just like Sandy Hook. You say right. Sandy, Sandy Hook. Hook, like if you said, "Hey, Hook. I'm near Sandy Hook," you're like, "Oh, take a deep breath." Right. Right. Let's see what next week's conversation around this. Where yeah, I'm sure we're going to see what happens. Touch this, and hopefully we don't. But at the rate that we're going for this year, um, you know, touching. I mean, there's so many different various topics that we, we can touch upon, whether or not politicians will do something, what they can do, um, or, you know, unfortunately, the next event. Right. Um, this is Late Night Parents. Ways to listen to the show is latenightparents.com. Uh, you listen to Ted and Rich. And Rich, the other topic that was really heavy in the news was Hurricane Dorian. As we speak, barreling down on Florida and the islands, Category 5? Category 5. 175 mile an hour winds, and they said that this thing may park for like 24 hours over Uh, the Bahamas. uh, There's going to be nothing left. Already, you know, houses are being destroyed, roofs flying off of buildings. Right. The next, the next 24, 48 hours, those poor people down there are just going to get hammered. 
and you know this is natural event. There's nothing we can do. No, and there's they, nothing. It's not like they have time to really to prepare. Mm-mm. So this is you know what it, where, where, where is the Red Cross going to be collecting? Right. Right. What numbers can you text to to you know donate a couple of bucks? Man. Uh, what do you say? It's a natural disaster. Yeah. Yeah. And and President Trump says he's never heard of a Category Five hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about reports. I had to put that in there. Being said of our favorite president firing a nuclear missile into a hurricane to blow it up. Yes. Well, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't want to talk about that. Maybe if he buys Greenland, then we can do it. Right. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to watch the Netflix episode Sticks and Stones. No. Dave Chappelle. I was going to. I'll, <clears throat> actually, I will probably watch that either tonight or tomorrow. Very, very, very entertaining. Yeah. I mean, once you get past the vulgarity. Well, it's Dave Chappelle, okay? so you, you know that's going to be once there. Once you get past that. But he goes after the PC culture. I've heard. The cancel culture. I've heard. Everyone is... I mean, he went in there with the intent. Um, He addressed everyone. Okay. All right. Really, I mean, it's 65 minutes Uh worth of probably some of his best work. Okay. Um, on latenightparent.com, we have ways to access the hidden epilogue for Dave Chappelle's newest comedy special, Sticks and Stones. Um, there's about a 22-minute piece that he does with fans, some mm-hmm. questions and answers oh, nice. and stuff like that at the end of the show. So at the right. end of the show, right. you keep watching, and there's going to be an option for you to click on. Okay. So it doesn't automatically start. Okay, you have to be actively looking. Yeah, you got to be actively looking. Tonight, so. I'll do it tonight. But um, I got to tell you, um, really, really, really entertaining. I mean, the type of laughing really? that you just sitting there, you bent over, and you're just like, "Oh good. my goodness!" No, he did and he, not. And he's going in. He's going fully in. I like I said. Spare no expense on everyone. Uh, Will will Hollywood blacklist him after this? He was daring Mm, Hollywood and the cancel culture to come after him. He's like, well, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Do it anyway. I don't care. I got the money. (laughs) (laughs) Next topic I have for you is why doesn't President Trump love Fox anymore? He's been popping off at Fox lately. Because they're not, well, not that I listen to them too often. Okay. But what, are they not just completely towing the, the Donald J. Trump flag anymore? Is like anything he says just doesn't go without challenge anymore? Do they realize, have they finally come to their senses and be like, all right, we can't blindly follow this guy. We just can't do it. So I've spent some time watching Fox because mm-hmm. I, I like to watch. Oh, yeah. You know, both sides. Watch, you have to watch both sides. I like to watch both sides. Um, with Fox, it's set up two separate ways. you got mm-hmm. the journalists. Yep. And you got the opinion. The bobbleheads. Yes, personalities <laughs> that are yeah. like, I'm going to tell everything that the president says and blah, 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 like that. But then you have the journalists that have a call that call constantly him call him out. Like the Shepard Smiths, mm-hmm. and the Neil Cavuto's, mm-hmm. that constantly call him out on his lies, good. calling him out on, yeah, well, you said tariffs were going to be, and you said the yeah. wall was going to be paid for, and he was like, and you lied. Mm. Cavuto, um, totally ripped him apart. Really, but he did it respectfully. Well, that's ev- everything should be done based on his words. Right, he was like, okay, because right. he was like, um. You had such and such to say about our network. Right. Let me tell you about yourself, sir. Really? Let me tell you where you've lied. You haven't been true. And what are we supposed to do? Just look the other way? Are they trying to get... 
is this an, an active editorial statement viewpoint change i don't know because like i said the other shows you know like the morning show mm-hmm. and like the evening um bobbleheads mm-hmm. um they're all all in right on okay. whatever he says okay. it's like don't fact check anything just go with it just go with okay and that's where because and but at the same time they don't call themselves journalists what do they call themselves opinionists yeah, there is a difference. If you're the yeah. opinionist, you, yeah. you're stating your opinion. You're stating there's, your opinion. There's no fact. There's no rule. This is, this this is, is my opinion. Okay. So, it's interesting. Um, I, I'm going to see how this goes because you, you've heard him rail. I mean, recently he's been railing against Fox. I don't watch them anymore. They're not good for us. They don't work for us anymore. Blah, blah, blah. Us. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was just like, ugh. Okay, so they stopped doing the party line. That, and they started hiring some Democratic people to come on to try to Which even news agents things out. Do. Yeah, that fair be, and balanced. Mm-hmm, fair, right, right. Yeah. Maybe it's the, the shape of things to come. I don't know. I don't want to jump, you know, too quick, but it's, 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 it's just to the point where he's just acting like a big baby. Yep. <laughs> and and he do it. just can't get you know if he doesn't get his way, it's just like oh, blah blah blah. All right, we've talked enough about the president. Um, Rich U.S. Open, Coco Golf against Naomi Osaka. I, I saw the end of the match. <sighs> Come on, and you, you saw the quotes that they you know that of the of the true conversation that was going on. Oh yeah, like yeah, come on, let's do this conference. They want to talk to you. Say, no, what? I'm going to cry. Then. You gotta let them know what you feel. It's okay. Right, right. Let them know. Come on, let's do this. Teamwork. Let me tell you, firing shots at each other across the net. Game's over. Kumbaya. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a sport. Two young ladies, both representing the future of the sport. Yeah. That looks like it's in good hands. That's in really good hands. I mean, I, I've got to tell you, I think it was Thursday night. I was watching Coco Golf. Um, after she she won, mm-hmm. she was out there signing tennis balls, throwing them out to the fans, nice, nice. taking selfies with fans. They were going nuts. I said, I can't believe she's such a show person at 15. At 15. Right. At 15. Right. I said, Look at the long career. She stays healthy. She stays on the right track. We're looking at her for the next 10 years at yes. least. Yes. It's not longer. Right. Um, Naomi Osaki, uh, Osaka is the defending U.S. Open champion. She beat Serena last year. She beat Serena, right. And I got to tell you. What is she, like 21? She's 21. Like yeah. She's 21. Yeah. And it was, it was something because she was being interviewed and she said, wow, you're 21 and you're already mentoring someone. She was like, well, I'm not a mentor. I'm mm-hmm. not mentoring her. I'm just helping her along the way. Right. You know, it's just like, hey, this is a situation where she's like, toughen up. Come on, let's go on over let's there. Let's go. Mm-hmm. That's, like you said, that's the future of the sport. And that's just going to make, um, I mean, I, I think, generate what, what a lot of these sports agencies want, want to do. Get the common fans' interest, right? Okay, and do I, like I like think, what Tiger did for golf. Yes, yes. Right. And I think they have the ability to do that. Um, really, really exciting last night. But I got to tell you, Coco had no chance last night. <laughs> she had no right. chance at all. You could see it. Outplayed, like, outgunned. Osaka was was toying with her, mm-hmm. and um, you know. And Matches like six three six 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 love done, done. Um, it was just, she got beat. She got beat. That's okay. She got kind of spanked. Right, and to that's be, okay to be, too. To be, to be truthful, but yeah, at right. fifteen, right, it's okay. Mm-hmm. You were on this big stage. Mm-hmm. Not you, you made it there. Let me tell you, you right. had you got to earn that spot. Yes, that's not a gimme. Not so an empty seat in the house. She earned that sp- position yes. and playing the upper echelon of the sport. Got beat. Yes. Okay. So I went two years ago. I had access to go last year. Mm-hmm. I did not go. Okay. 
Yeah, you missed it. I had a ticket. I had a ticket to the Osaka and you really? uh, and oh, now you really Williams matchup where she just lost it. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't go because I was attending a 40th anniversary. Oh, all right. Well, can't well, say that's worthwhile. It was one of those things I got snuckered into because my wife said to me, if you do go, uh-huh. I got a feeling I'm not going to see you for the rest of the day. So I'm going to say, you shouldn't go. And I was uh, like, Argh. but it's okay. It's okay. I'm all right. But, um, Rich, tell me this much. Why are our favorite devices listening to us when we don't want them to? Because we don't check the security settings and turn them <laughs> off. We hear from, you know, from... Xbox now. Xbox. Engineers listening on, on, on gamer conversations. Contractors. Not even full-fledged engineers. They're just like, hey, okay. They're listening in. No different than with Apple. Same thing. Right. They said they're listening in, and people were having sex. And it was just and like. they're listening in. And they're listening in. What was the, uh, the Microsoft video Video capture, motion capture device. What was the name of that thing? They finally gave up on like two or three years ago. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, don't you, remember. yeah. Zoom. No, no it wasn't not Zoom. Zoom. Nope. But hey, I mean, again, that thing had high res. It could capture video, basically. Yes. And of course, audio. Right. And would just be sitting there. So, th- this news right here just brings Xbox into the mix of Microsoft's Skype and Cortana eavesdropping practices. You got to be careful. You know, it's great to outfit your home with Google Homes and uh, Alexas and Echo Shows and and all these wonderful devices. And they're all listening. And they're all listening. And you got to go in there. And, you know, it's like. But but then again, if you turn off the turn off the active listening. okay, Then you kill half the features of the device. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. You know, because that's the whole purpose of it, right? So that you can just walk by and say, blankety blank. Right. Play me some music. Okay. Or order me this. Yeah. Or what's the weather? But I'm sure there's there's also features where you can go in there and say, okay, this is going to be the feature or the word to the turn it right. off. To but, it ha- deactivate. Right. but it has to be listening. It still has to be listening. Right. Right. I don't know. I agree with you. You know, it's that's- just like your phone and you have... a 50 million apps downloaded and location services is enabled everywhere (laughs) and wherever you go it's being posted (laughs) on your social media threads and they've got access to all your contacts because they asked for it right (laughs) and all your email because they asked for it like I just checked into Sue's rendezvous right you know and you're like and I don't think you really want that (laughs) put out there like that I don't know that's just me I'm with you I, I, I don't know I don't know hey we don't do shout outs. But if we did, Jesse James Kazakowski, who's fighting this upcoming week um, mm-hmm. for CES, for his MMA, it's like um, it's part of the UFC. It's right. part of the UFC, uh, CES. So he's, he's got a match coming up. So we're definitely rooting him on. Where is it going to be at? Where is it going to be? Um, it's going to be in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Oh, okay, close by. Yeah, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, I saw him fight back in February, mm-hmm. in at Mohegan Sun. Okay, Mohegan Sun. He puts on a show. Really, really, um, really intelligent, bright young man. All right. Uh, I mean, the future that potentially he has in front of him, unbelievable. I think he's 20 or 21 years old. Another young gun. Another young gun. I'm like, this guy. Um, and our friends at uh, AAA Lucha Libre, who are partnering with um, Impact Wrestling to have an event at the Hulu Center, Hulu Theater at Master Square Garden on September 15th. Big shout out to them. Um Rich, I don't know your thoughts on, are you excited? Have you seen the trailer for The Irishman? I did not. Rich. De Niro? Yes. Scorsese? 
Pesci, and Al Pacino. It, it's Goodfellas all over again. It's Goodfellas <laughs> all over again, plus Al Pacino. Yeah, plus Pacino. Um, but Netflix is pushing this. Yeah. But they're pushing it in the theaters first. Oh, really? Yes. They're they're making that step. Yes. They're pushing it in the theaters, and then it's going to be released three weeks later on Netflix. Oh, on Netflix. Okay. That's Netflix dipping their feet. Because they said, oh, Academy Awards, you have issues with X, right. Y, and Z. So we'll put it in a theater. So we'll put it in a Multiple few theaters. select right. theaters. Right. Um, it's not in a wide range of theaters. So it's like it won't get the, you know. Oh, in three thousand theaters, right, like right. like the Avengers, It'll be in, in fifty seven hundred theaters. No, right. it, I, I and I even wonder if it's even in fifty. Well, you know, we're, it, it'll be in Manhattan somewhere. It's me in Manhattan, L.A. It'll be L.A. Probably Chicago. Chicago, maybe Boston. Yeah, yeah Miami, probably. Right. Get the yeah, and D.C. Yes, and D.C. Yes. So it's um. I mean, that kind of star power. Yeah, that is a lot of stuff. That's, stuff that's big budget. I mean, how much do you pay those guys to all get on the screen at the same time? And the best thing about it is they're using the de-aging technology because the, the movie spans decades. Okay. So um, who do we see? Kind of like Nick Nick Fury in Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, kind of digitized. It looks a little off. A little bit like off. Like Kirk, Kirk Douglas as well. No, yes, Kirk Douglas. yes. The other Douglas. Michael yeah. Douglas. Michael Douglas, yeah. Um, okay. Princess Leia in Rogue One. Right, right. Okay. You know, okay, fine. Yeah, it's using that technology, so. Do it, do it well, sure. It's, um, believe it or not, they said $160 million to make. I'm, I'm just scrolling through the, uh, the actors. Mm-hmm. And I'd say it's probably like 130 million in acting salaries. Yes. Because I mean, you, you got Harvey Keitel in there too. Yes. Ray Romano, Bart. This is like the who's who of, of mob movies and everything else going know, on here. I know. Wow. I um. When's it come out on? I won't. I won't go see it on the big screen, but I will definitely see it. I think Amazon Netflix November 18th or 17th or. I'm sure that's going to. Um, I mean, I get it. I see the strategy. They're like, okay, we're gonna just dip right. our feet in there just enough so that they can be available. Right. They, all you have to do is have it in select theaters. And there it is. And, and there it is. And it's eligible. We've met your criteria. Um, Rich, we had the opportunity to attend and in this apropos, this past week where we work, we had the opportunity to attend a- active shooter training. Yep. And it's just so strange that we attended on Thursday that timing. and this right. happens 24, 48 hours later. The timing on that. You know. Um, and actually, I was, it got canceled. There was an act, uh, the other side of active shooter training training on Friday. Oh. It got canceled. Oh, okay. Uh, I wasn't going to make it anyway because I, was, I wasn't going to take off of work. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, timing is everything, right? It really is. I mean... So from your from your perspective, I mean, the, there was three things I picked up. Yep, that was the, that's, what they, that's what they that's what they teach you. Run, if you can't run, hide, and if you can't hide, fight. Right, and fight doesn't mean just throw your fists up. Fight means throw whatever you got. Right, hit with whatever you got. Bum rush everyone at the same time. It's you know it's got to be the last resort though because if you're in that situation, it's an active shooter. It's someone. Coming down the hall, you, you know, the, as that video that they played, which I thought was a pretty good video, um, the, the one in the business. Yes, that was really pretty good. Yes. and they they, they both were the schools one mm-hmm. was too. Mm-hmm. But uh, you never know. You got to kind of always be alert. Yeah, you do. Always thinking like if something doesn't sound right, it's okay to err on the state of caution. It's like that didn't sound right. Let me get the heck out of here. Right. And take as many people with me as Correct. I can to get Correct. out and, and into a safe location. Um, but it's also just as important, you know, for school, same thing, mm-hmm. you know, tell your, your, your sons and daughters that maybe out in college, be alert. You know, there are lots of little things anyone can do, you know, like I'll, when I go out to eat back to the wall, I want to see the door. Always want to see the door. Okay. Have, have you 
and as the gentleman who did the training for us uh, at the school also plan plan a little bit ahead right so like there's more than one exit there's correct more than one entrance always be thinking if I can't get out over here mm -hmm. I'm gonna get out over here okay I'm gonna hide behind this I'm gonna run behind this you know get get out that's your first plan just just you have to think get out of, of wherever you are um, yeah run hide barricade you know if you can't get in they're gonna keep on moving because they want to be done quickly as the general general mentioned you know this this isn't hours these things happen in minutes right it's over and you know done with one way or the other in a very very short term they're not looking to take hostages they're looking just to shoot people right they want to get in get done and of course law enforcement's on the way we're in New York City law enforcement's going to be to us in seconds correct you go to other areas. It could Rural be areas. Minutes. It could be minutes. It could be mm -hmm. ten minutes. Yep. You know, it's yep. it's. I don't know, and and like I said, it's easy for us to watch the video. Well, it's, it's not easy for us, but no. remember watching a video for Parkland, and some of the officers were outside, and right. I don't want to say they neglected to go inside, but neglected to go inside. And, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, you can call it because, and I mean, the, the gentleman was, you know, brought up on charges because he did not go in. Right. The, and even for law enforcement, there's, and this I think we've mentioned this before, the the plan of of attack for law enforcement first responders has changed. There was a time when they were told, "All right, wait till there's a team, go in as a team, and you know, try to engage the, the shooter." It's not what it is anymore. You're the first guy on site. If unless you know there's somebody else to back you up, like 15, 20 seconds behind you, you go in, right? And knowing you're going to probably be, be taken out, but you go in to do what you can to try and stop, to engage, to delay. Uh, no more sit back and wait. And, but you know, taking it a step further, allegedly, the uh, officer in Parkland not only did he not just go in, he he held other people out. And, you know, it just made things much worse. And, and, you know, more lives were lost because of that, allegedly. Uh, Put that out there. But, yeah. Hey, really quick, want to go into, have you looked into solar energy? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit, I did. <clears throat> solar energy pros and cons. Um, some advantages and disadvantages. We have a guest blog on late night parents for solar energy mm -hmm. solar energy solar is a proven technology yep been around <laughs> technically since like the 1800s right so, so solar is nothing new um as far as being able to turn sunlight into energy uh, that's a good thing but you know there are some companies been out there doing it 30 years right it, it's well known it's built in you've been seeing solar panels around for the longest time it's just now you're really starting to see them i, I was about to places. say in my neighborhood i'm seeing them even more and right. more and like that push yeah. um and I, and I think that's due to <clears throat> the cost to be able down. the cost is coming down um financial flexibility yes yeah there's more finan financing options now there's incentives, sometimes there's right. tax incentives. Right. Um, sure. You buy it, lease it. You got choices there. Everyone benefits. The grid, you know, whatever you don't use goes mm -hmm. back in so mm -hmm. you can lower your standard electric bill because you're actually feeding the grid so you can gotcha. offset some of the some of the costs. Um, so solar works in many climates? Yeah, it's not really temperature, it's it's sunlight. So it mm. can be it can be cold. Doesn't matter. It's collecting the sun. So you're telling me if I have a solar, solar uh, grids all over my igloo <laughs> in Alaska, it's I've gonna work. It. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. It may not be as efficient, but it's going to work. You're still getting sun. And let's face it. Remember, if especially if you're in Alaska, uh, you're mm -hmm. not getting direct sunlight. You're getting it at more of an angle, right? Than someone say in Texas or Florida or Ecuador. Ah. <laughs> Said the cost dropped nine percent between 2016 and 2017. So you're definitely on. Prices continue to the the um, totally decline, as you mentioned, tax rebates, state policies, all of the above. Um, solar energy benefits the whole electricity grid. I mean, Rich, you know a lot about solar energy because I'm pulling this up on the oh. site, and you've already <laughs> recited this. I asked. Ah. 
So did you go to like a solar seminar? And no, no, I um, was in Home Depot. Okay. And one there was a class? Guys, no, no, it was just a, a gentleman there trying to sell. And oh, I was okay. Like, Tell me. And we got into conversation, and uh, you know, so it, it's and this was probably at least a year ago. Pricing still, it's still got to come down more okay. to me because you got this long-term finance agreement. Even though you can make, you're not going to make money off the deal per se, but you can lower your costs because again, you're feeding it back into the grid. Right. Uh, honestly, and you know, while there's all those pluses, there are some some minuses. The biggest one for me is just having those ugly panels on my roof. Right. But how often do you look at your roof? Good point. You know, I mean... Good point, but you don't want to be the first one on the neighborhood with the solar panels. Right. Like, look at those shiny black things uh, this there. I mean... Even though everyone knows what they are. The only time you would look at your roof, if your roof was, like, weather beat. Right. You know, that's right. where it would cause... Well, for me. Right. You know, because let's say I'm walking through the neighborhood, and I'm like, mm -hmm. man, look at that roof right there. Yeah. Look at that one. I'm like, oh, that one was recently done. Yeah. Well, they have solar panels. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Right. Um... Solar panels have a long lifespan, so that's interesting. I, I kind of did wonder about that. It's like, you yeah. know, so I'm going to put these things up. I'm like, am I going to get twenty years out of them? Ten years out of them? You know, because it's, it's an investment. You right. don't want to have to reinvest too soon. It says only one in twenty thousand solar panels are ever returned. It's not bad. No, that's not bad. Do you really see solar panels increasing home value? Like, I guess it would, but I'm like, it would take away from just aesthetically. Exactly. But, I, you know, maybe if that might be the time where you are the second person and you're not the one who paid the outlay to have them installed. Okay. You're just immediately gaining the benefits. Okay. You know, the house, the house already has them, so you're not comparing how it looked before and after. And, I mean, you know, give it X number of years. And even the visual factor is not going to be as important or not, not, not as much of a factor because if so many more people will have them. It's just, you know, it is just as it is now. It's just another way to make electricity. Okay. So we'll get used to it. And, you know, let's be real about it. What if every single home had solar panels? Just what if? Wow. That's all that energy being created. Yes. You know, clean. Clean. Whatever the cost. Of course, it, it, there's, there's, there's impacts. As noted in the article, there's impacts as to manufacturing right. these panels. All right, like right. anything else, it's got to be made, and, and there's not much in factory manufacturing that's that's clean and good for the environment. But they're pretty much uh, there's an immediate turnaround in that they're not putting anything negative into the environment. You know, I'm seeing reading that it adds fifteen thousand dollars in home value. How much well, like, it cost? Well, how much <laughs> did it cost? Twenty thousand dollars. Right. Says so solar does not work at night. Well, that's kind of obvious. You need hmm. sunlight, but I mean, so who, uh, Musk and his batteries in your in your garage? It's it's a storage, right? It's still using the electricity. It's just not charging at right. that point. So that's a, a non issue, non factor, as far as I think. Solar panels are not attractive. There's our conversation. Black shiny things on the roof, so. especially if the roof faces the street. Right. Everyone just drives down like, oh, look at Oh, those. look at that. Right. Oh, my God. Some places are like, oh, great, look at them. Some places are like, oh, why'd they put that ugly thing on their house? Rich, you cannot install a home solar system yourself. They don't know Rich Valdez. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, won't go for that one, but I, my electrician friends will help me. Ah, my roof isn't right for solar. The way the house lays, okay, directional. Would that be like a, a a cape home or something like that? Or I might just remember, sun you know rises in the east and sets in the west. So therefore, you know, if maybe if you're just not at the, at the right angle or a good angle uh, to get the the most benefit out of your the where you can place the most panels on the roof, that could be something. Or S you got trees, you got all kinds of things around the area. Solar hurts the environment. That's what we were talking about. It's still a manufactured product, and it's electric, and I'm sure there's all kinds of dangerous chemicals and things like that when you make them, when you manufacture them. But even that, these, all those things tend to, to decrease over time. Not all solar panels are high quality. So I guess that also goes to the more you pay, the better it is. 
I would don't think. know. I would I think. think. I would think if you're getting some type of aftermarket, you know, what you get is what you pay for. There are know. some companies though offering 25 year warranty. Mm-hmm. And if someone's going to offer a 25 year warranty, I think they're going to stand behind their product. Oh, of course. So, so 10 years from now, if I have a problem with the panel and I get number 20,000, they'll come and replace it. So okay, I'm good with that. So when are you getting yours? I'm still looking into this and researching, and uh, um, you know what me like I sit on stuff for like five years <laughs> and I wait, and wait, you pay, and you pay half as much, right? And you get it twice as efficient, so it's okay. You know, I was thinking about it more when I had that conversation because we had a tree cut down in front of the house. That okay. was the biggest thing that made me think uh, about it. I'm like, I got all sun now. Good for you. Now it could make a little bit of sense to do it. Right. All day long it can sit there and collect and push that electricity back in the grid and yes. cut me a check. Mm. So we'll see. Rich, we have a recording that I did um, how to teach your children how to handle emergencies without scaring the bleep out of them before we start it. Um, best ways to get in contact with Richie V? Late Night Rich. And I am the real Ted Hicks. Uh, we'll hopefully be back next week because we've been taking um, kind of a relaxed uh, summer break, which is well needed. Yes. Um, before we go into that recording, happy anniversary. Thank you. You and yes, Linda. Last week was our 39th anniversary. 39th. Sorry, 29th. Uh, Sorry, jumping ahead of things. Woo! Say. 29th Woo! anniversary, thank you. 29th anniversary. I see, I'm looking to, forward to the future. See? I was about to say, Rich, she really keeps you young. <laughs> oh, my God. 29 years with Linda. Happy anniversary, darling. <laughs> Very good. All the best. Um, and here's the recording. Have a great week. Hey, this is Ted Hicks from Late Night Parents. Ways to follow the show is LateNightParents.com. How to teach your children to handle emergencies without scaring the bleep out of them. So while discussing possible emergency scenarios with one um, children is never a pleasant topic. Parents do not want to frighten them or create anxieties. We had a discussion with Dr. Sunam Haviz, who's a New York City-based uh, neuropsychologist and school psychologist who has an approach to emergency preparedness that won't freak your children out. You tell children an emergency is something unusual that happens, which could hurt people or cause damage to things like uh, houses and cars. Explain to them that the nature sometimes provides too much of something like rain, wind, or snow. Talk about effects of an emergency that children can relate to such as loss of electricity, water, and te telephone service, flooded roads, and uprooted trees. Explain that everyone is better um, able to take care of themselves in emergencies when they know what to do. First, teach your ch uh, children the difference between a problem and an emergency. A problem is something that they need help with, but does not require emergency services. An emergency service, an emergency is a situation that requires immediate assistance from police or the fire department or requires immediate medical assistance through paramedics or EMTs. When your child experiences a problem, he or she should decide whether to call you immediately, call a neighbor, or whether the problem can wait until you get home. For example, you probably want your child to call you if he or she felt scared had trouble getting to tap into the house, got home and found the electric, uh, electricity was off. The following issues would warrant an immediate call to 911. A fire, evidence of a break-in, a medical emergency such as someone being unresponsive or bleeding profusely. The step one, you gotta create a communication plan. Teach your child one parent's cell phone number or good contact number. Dr. Hafiz says that starting at around age five, kids are developmentally ready to memorize a seven or 10 digit number. 
practice with your child and turn the phone number into a song, like a modified version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Designate an out-of-state contact. This will be a resource and person and point person for your family to call. Choose a location other than your home where your family can meet. You'll need to go there in case of a fire or an earthquake, for example. Your meeting place might be a local park, school, or shelter. Walk to the site with your child so he or she knows exactly how to get there. Designate a trusted friend or family member who can pick up your child um, at child care or school or, or if you are unable to get there in a disaster situation. Be sure that you give an official permission to release your child to that person. Make a card with your plan for each adult's wallet. Include the contact names for your emergency location, the out-of-state contact number, put a copy in your school-age child's backpack, and discuss the plan with your kids. Inform caregivers and nearby relatives of your plan. Be sure to give a copy of your plan to your child's teacher, too. If you're not good at texting, improve your skills. When a cell phone signal strength goes down, texting often still works because it uses less bandwidth and network capacity. Everyone needs to know about calling 911 in an emergency. Dr. Hafiz uh, stresses kids also need to know the specifics about what an emergency is, asking them questions like, what would you do if we had a fire in our house? What would you do if you saw someone trying to break in? Gives you a, a chance to discuss what constitutes an emergency and what to do if one occurs. Role playing is especially good ways to address various emergency scenarios and give your, your kids the confidence they'll need to handle them. Dr. Hafiz points out that for younger children, it might also help to talk about who the emergency workers are in your community. Police workers, I mean, excuse me, police officers, firefighters, paramedics, doctors, and so on. And what kind of things they do to help people who are in trouble. This will clarify not only what types of emergencies can occur, but also who can help. When the call 911, Dr. Fees explains that part of the understanding what an emergency is, is knowing what is not. And if a fire, intruder in the home, an unconscious family member, these things these are things that will require a call to 911. A skinned knee, a stolen bike, or an agreement with a schoolmate would not. Still, teach your child that if ever in doubt and there's no doubt to ask, make the call. It's much better to be safe than sorry. Make sure your, your kids understand that calling 911 as a joke is a crime in many places. In some cities, officials estimate as much as 75% of the calls made to 911 are non-emergency calls. These are, are not all pranks. Some people accidentally push the emergency button on their cell phones. Others don't realize that 911 is for true emergencies only, not for such things as a flat tire or even about a theft that occurred um, the week prior. Work out a home evacuation plan. In the event of a fire or a natural disaster, your entire family will need to have a coordinated evacuation plan to ensure that everyone makes it out of the house. Dr. Hafiz stresses that it's important to explain to your child that all material possessions, even favorite ones, can be replaced and that it's far more important for them to exit the house than it is to save their belongings. Make sure that he or she knows how to get out of the house if you're not able to reach her. Um, to make sure, the, to, to make her way to a prearranged family meeting place and what she should do when he or she arrives there first. Discuss region specific natural disasters. You probably won't need to waste much time on teaching a child that lives in the Midwest how to manage a, uh, a hurricane, but he or she 
will need to know what to do in the event of a tornado. Talking about the natural disasters that are mostly likely um, to occur in your area and making a specific plan to deal with them is imperative, especially if you live in a region that's particularly prone to environmental emergencies. Role-playing specific scenarios. One of the best ways to determine how much your child knows and what she, he or she still needs to learn about emergency preparedness is to role play specific scenarios that he or she could potentially encounter. There's a reason why public schools practice fire drills. They help kids prepare in a relatively low stress environment for an emergency so that in a high pressure situation, they know how to react. Role playing serious injury situations, weather emergencies, a house fire, and even a potential intruder situation gives you an idea about what your child knows and, ha and, and helps you to teach them a more detailed information so that they're prepared to handle any emergency. After the emergency, there's time to recover. Immediately after the emergency, try to reduce your child's fear and anxiety. Keep the family together. While you look for housing and assistance, you may want to leave your, your children or relatives with relatives or friends. Instead, keep the family together as much as possible and make um, children a part of what you're going to get the family back on its feet. Children are anxious and they'll worry that their parents won't return. Explain what will happen next. Get down to your child's level, eye level and talk to them. Encourage children to talk. Let children talk about the emergency, ask questions as much as they want. Encourage children to describe what they're feeling. Listen to what they say. If possible, include the entire family in the discussion. Include children in recovery activities. Give children chores that are, that are their responsibility. This will help children feel that they are part of the recovery. Having a task will help them understand that everything will be all right. This is how to teach your children how to handle emergencies without scaring the bleep out of them. This is Ted Hicks from Make Up The views expressed in the previous program did not necessarily represent those of the staff, management, or owners of WGBB. This is WGBB AM 1240 and W240DFFM 95.9 Freeport, New York. Sheila, she, she has split ends. B, console her. Oh, sweetie, this is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C, take charge. Got to get this all straightened out.